if you're feeling good about the basics of Lahopital's rule, here's a problem with a little bit more kick to it. We have, find the limit as x goes to zero, of one minus cosine of x raised to the three halves power, divided by x minus sine of x. Now to start, we can try evaluating a zero and see if a number comes out. We get zero over zero, so that suggests that we try Lahopital's rule. Before we do that, let's try to get a feel for what the limit actually is. So we'll take some numbers that are close to zero, put them into our calculator, and see what comes out. So if I try 0 0.0001, out comes 2.12, and that goes on. So this is not a familiar number, and we know since we're taking a limit with trig functions, there could be wild oscillation near zero. That means we should pull the graph out just to see what's happening with our limit. Now, we take the graph of this function, okay, some things we note, okay, there's no oscillation near zero. As I come in from the right, this is gonna settle on our 2.12. So coming from the left, it'll go to minus 2.12. Okay, and that's accounted for the fact that this function's odd. So if I get the limit from the right, we're gonna get the limit from the left with a minus sign. Now, strict answer to our question is, limit does not exist as a two-sided limit. So we're gonna use Lahopital's rule to find the limit coming in from the right. The punchline is that limit is three over square root of two. To get that, we're gonna use Lahopital's rule, but it's not gonna be straightforward. We're gonna need a trick. Now, recall, okay, Lahopital's rule. Okay, so here's the strict statement. Basically, if we're taking a limit of a quotient, and in the top and bottom, they both either go to zero or plus or minus infinity at the same time. We could take derivatives of numerator and denominator and then try that limit that exists, say is equal to L, then the limit of our original quotient will also be equal to L. So if we're gonna go with a straightforward approach using Lahopital's rule, okay, what happens? Okay, so here we have our condition numerator, denominator go to zero, as zero comes in from the right. We take derivatives of numerator and denominator, okay, so we work that out. And then we see, we're gonna be in a situation where we can apply Lahopital's rule again. So we're gonna get a zero over zero when we do the derivatives, after we simplify. Now, what you'll note, okay, after you do two or three of these, you're never gonna get rid of this term, one minus cosine of x to the one half power. So it's gonna keep forcing your limit to go to zero over zero. So a direct approach with Lahopital's rule is not gonna work here. We have options. To get around the square root, either we use a trig identity, or without that, we invoke general properties of limits with square roots. Now with the first option, I note, I have a one minus cosine x, okay, that's what's bringing the zero into the denominator, if I multiply by one plus cosine x, we get one minus cosine squared x. That becomes sine squared x, and then inside of the square root, it becomes a sine. Okay, note, we're working with small positive x, so the sine will be positive, and then I can say sine is equal to square root of sine squared. Okay, there's no negative sign to worry about there. Now, we multiply by one plus cosine x to the one half over itself. Okay, we work out the denominator as promised, so the signs cancel, we're left with one plus cosine x raised to the one half. If I put a zero in there, okay, we're gonna get two to the one half or square root of two as promised. And that gets our three over square root of two. For option two, okay, note, we have that square root of x is a continuous function on its domain. So for x greater than or equal to zero, that means if we have the limit as x goes, okay, the zero from the right of f of x existing and equal to L, a number that's greater than or equal to zero, then we can take the limit of the square root of f. Okay, and that's gonna go to the square root of L. Now, that says, okay, we'll take the square of this, see if it goes somewhere, and then take its square root. So we take the limit of sine squared of x over one minus cosine x, Okay, use the same trick as over here, but we're assuming we don't, we haven't thought of that. So I evaluate and we see that we get zero over zero, so we can bring back Lahopital's rule. We take our derivatives, 
Okay, then we see the sines cancel out. I have two cosine x. We evaluate a zero, we get a two. So that's the limit for the square. When I take the square root, we get square root of two, and then I multiply that by the three halves. We get back our three over square root of two as promised again.